Hello everyone, my name is Freedy here, and today's video will be covering how to be an efficient defender and attacker in Gambit, without relying on certain exotics and such. So first, we will be starting with being a defender in a match. As a defender, your main role will be to support your teammates through taking out enemies so they can drop their moats, taking out blockers so your teammates can cash in, and taking out invaders that will try to stop you and your team from advancing. This is pretty much a layback role you'll be doing, as you'll be the eyes and ears for your team, who will be focusing on collecting and banking as many moats as possible. Now when you first start, instead of advancing onto the enemies, you'll be staying behind at an ideal location and taking them out at long distances and making a path for them, for your team and everyone else much more easier. When an invader comes, you'll be the first person to interact and take down the intruder before they can get to you or your team, so finding a nice location or vantage view that overviews the whole entire area and spawn points will be a big advantage. I would say taking cover near your first spawn point will be your first go to as it will allow you to traverse the three areas much more easier when hunting them, but also forcing the invader to come out into the open if they want to get to you, which will leave them open for you or your teammates if they're nearby to take them out. Now depending on the invader, you don't want to be up close to them as in one we one fights, you never know what they're packing, so keeping at a long distance where they can't reach you will be more beneficial for you as it will increase your survival chances by quite a high amount. It's also advised to know where each of the spawn points for invaders are, as you can ambush them, or if you're in a team, you can do a call out when necessary. So if you can't get there to stop them, then your teammates will know what's going to happen and how they can become more defensive in the meantime. Of course, at the same time you can collect moats and also participate as well with summoning blockers, but I recommend you do this if there's only a moat that's left by or missed and is about to disappear because your teammates never managed to collect in time. Now this is a role that for coordinated teams will make full use of as they will want to make sure they can summon the primeval quickly without any distraction involved. So all you need to do is keep your team and the bank safe at all times, which is nonetheless quite simple depending on the player you're up against. If this is the role you're going to be playing, then you need an ideal loadout designed for PvE and PvP. I recommend you're connected to be a sniper or a scout of your choice with masterwork so you can produce plenty of orbs for your team, but also allow you to safely take on adds, blockers, invaders and such, or at a relatively safe space. Next, your energy should be a SMG or Sidon for close range fights, if your teammates get in trouble or the invader gets to you before you can react to them. As these weapons are fast, they'll be able to take on the invaders easily without them being able to fight back quick enough and can melt adds very quickly with their surplus amount of ammo. Shotguns are also viable but tricky because of how close you have to be with them, and how, like I said before, can be dangerous as you don't know what they may be packing up front. Your heavy now is up to you as this slot should be more designed around taking on heavy and tanky adds such as the Prime Evil. The linear fusion rifles are perfect to use because they're headshot multiplier and quick damage at safe distances, while grenade launchers and rocket launchers can pack a punch against small to large groups in one blast, but it's up to you to decide on what will be more damaging for you and your team. Lastly, your subclass should be something that will be packing a punch when you manage to summon your prime evil. So either the Titan's Fist of Havoc, Warlock's Naval Bomb, or Hunter's Tethers are perfect for both ad control and melting bosses. Now if you choose to be an invader, then your task is to simply stop and distract players from the other team from depositing their moats through any means necessary. Now you can engage them however you like as you're on a time limit, but you want to cause as much destruction as possible so that by the time you leave, your teammates should have sent enough blockers to put them on hold for a good solid few minutes. So how do you go about this? Simple, you can either go use the sleeper, slim them up like a pro chump and zap them away, or you can use a super which depends on your subclass to take them out in one go, or play it safe and take them out at long distances since they can't reach you without making themselves vulnerable, and then move in once a few players are off the field. Now while you're waiting to invade, you can help your team clear up adds and also deposit moats. But once the portal is up, make sure you don't have any moats on you, as if you die with 5, 10 or even 15 moats, then they're gone for good, and it also puts your team back in terms of points. So it's advised to play it smart and invade with nothing on you. Doing so, even if you die, doesn't mean it puts your team back. Now once you're in a realm, you need to be aware that there will most likely be a defender there who will hunt you down the moment you pop up, so your first task should be to dispatch up defender before they get to you. Using a super or heavy at any necessary will be beneficial as it will allow you to do the job perfectly, even if you feel like it's a waste on that one person, but taking out that one person will allow you to then focus on the rest of the team while the defender waits to then respawn. Plus, 
One less player on the field means less moves being collected, and that basically means you're slowing them down by doing what you're designed to do. But remember, this won't always be the case as sometimes they do play smart and they can ambush you the moment you spawn. If you're successful now with doing that, then I suggest you take out the closest guardian on the other team first before heading into the fray, as you can get swarmed easily with little time to react. If done right, you'll be able to net at least 2 to 3 kills before being sent back, and then go back and repeat the process. If not successful, then it's not a big problem as you can try again but change up your tactic. But against more coordinated teams, it kinda does vary. Sometimes you'll be able to change up your tactics and catch them off guard. Other times you go in there, you're kinda just giving them free points, so it doesn't always work within your favour. But it doesn't hurt trying though, does it? Now your loadout depends on the engagement on whether you want to be up close or stay at distances. So your kinetic should be a AR, hand cannon or scout rifle to allow you to cover medium ground engagements. Your secondary should focus on either close to long range fights, so a shotgun or sniper will be the most appealing for covering this area, and your heavy now needs to be something that can take out players in one or two hits. So a rocket launcher or grenade launcher with high blast will be a great choice for your pick, or super similar if you want to go down that path. Your subclass now should be something that can take out multiple players in one go, but it's more up to you to decide on as anything can work within being a vader. But overall, play however you feel is best for you. You can either be a supporter, you can be a defender, you can be a attacker, or you can be someone that just collect moves and deposits. It's entirely up to you how you want to play. But do give these two roles a look into as they do really help your team out in terms of bringing up your primeval much more quicker or stopping the other team from summoning their primeval. Depending on how you want to go about it, the choice is yours. But with that being said, that's the end of the guide video, I do hope you enjoyed it, as I hope to bring more in the near future. If you enjoy the content then do leave a like, a sub, and also do press the bell button to stay always updated to when I upload, as I appreciate a lot if you do. But like always, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.